Hi everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the go-to place to learn about business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters and YouTube members for making this video possible, and also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well. So please check the link in the description or click the join button below for more details. My name is Sava, and today we're investigating a key foundational concept in financial econometrics that is relevant to the modeling of interest rate dynamics, as well as to bond risk management and pricing. And that is the Wasserchek model that he developed in 1977 that incorporates the logic of mean reversion and applies it to interest rate dynamics. It assumes that interest rates have some long-term equilibrium value that is denoted B here, that they tend towards in the long run. However, they can be, uh, for a short time period at least, pushed above or below that uh, by some uh, market risk factors, by some short-term disturbances that are related to uh, possibly monetary policy, uh, inflation considerations, which is quite relevant now, or overall market sentiment. And this is represented by these factor sigma and this stochastic component of the process. The continuous form of the Vasicek model can be uh, thought of as a version of the onstein ulbeck process, which is also characterized by this mean reversion uh, factor. And what is important for the Vasicek model is this parameter A, which corresponds to the convergence speed or adjustment speed of interest rate towards their equilibrium value. And there are some macroeconomic and macrofinancial reasons to assume or presume that this long-term equilibrium value of B exists. We can remember the natural rate hypothesis. We can relate it with the economic cycle, with booms and busts and uh, uh, fluctuations of interest rates within the cycle. We can also think about how monetary policy evolves over the course of the cycle, or we can even um, remember inflation targeting and relate it with the relationship between nominal and real interest rates. So here, to test uh, the Vasicek model and apply it to real-world data, we have got weekly mortgage rates from the United States market from year-end 2010 until uh, the present day, pretty much. So we've got 587 weekly observations. However, it might be tricky to estimate the continuous form of the Vasicek model, which is basically a stochastic uh, differential equation um, using a date. It can be hard to calibrate. That means that we have to represent the Vasicek model in the discrete form and then use some technique to estimate it. And here I'll be showing how to represent uh, the Vasicek model in a form that can be estimated using simple ordinary least squares regression. So this discrete form converts the differential, the uh, derivative of the uh, interest rate with its first difference, uh, delta RT. And here we represent everything in terms of discrete changes of interest rates and discrete changes of time, delta T. And in our case, as we've got weekly data, delta T is one week, which means that if we want to estimate the model using simple OLS, we'll regress the first difference of the interest rate uh, onto the constant, as well as the lagged interest rate. And we will have an error term, epsilon T, which in the Vasicek model is assumed to be IID independent and identically distributed with a parameter sigma squared that corresponds to the variance of the interest rate. And this would be key in estimating uh, the variance of the interest rates over the course of some period or in the long run. As, as due to the mean reversion, we would be able to uh, quite nicely form a closed form solution for the long run variance of the interest rates or long run volatility of the interest rates. What is neat here is that the constant in this model is if we expand this particular parameterization would be an estimator of the product of a and b and the slope in this regression would be the estimator of negative a the negative of the convergence speed or adjustment speed so let's proceed to the estimation let's first calculate the first differences of the deltas of the interest rate week to week so we can just subtract 
the interest rate, the rate on US mortgages last week from the value that's prominent this week and enforce it throughout our sample and lag the previous observation of the interest rate in a separate column. That would allow us to estimate this model using the Linus function. So here we can select a five by two uh, cell range and enforce the Linus function regressing the deltas of the interest rate onto the lag of the interest rate. And we obviously need the constant as that would be the estimator of the AB product. And we'll need the additional statistics to test for significance as well as to naturally get the standard error, which would be relevant for our forecasting and interpretation. We can enforce this formula using shift control enter and interpret the coefficients that we get. First of all, we can test for their statistical significance to make sure that the Vasichuk model does indeed significantly explain the dynamics of weekly US mortgage rates over the past 12 years. So here, to calculate the T stats, we divide the coefficients by the respective standard errors, and we get values in excess of two, which is a good sign. And we can rigorously test them using a two-tailed T distribution, so T dist two-tailed, input the absolute value of the T statistic, as well as the degrees of freedom over here that we can log column-wise. And we see that both of our coefficients are statistically significant at 5%, which means that the Vasicek model does significantly explain the dynamics of interest rates, which is good news for us. However, to proceed to our forecasting and uh, interpretation of the results in the economic sense, we need to extract the convergence speed as well as the equilibrium level from our regression parameters. As the slope coefficient over here is the uh, negative convergence speed, A would be negative value of this coefficient, which means that every single week, the interest rate uh, reverts back to the equilibrium uh, by roughly one percentage point of the deviation, as we can see from this model, or all the more so from this parameterization in the discrete form. And the equilibrium value could be retrieved by dividing this coefficient, which is A times B, by the value of A we've just estimated. So we divide this coefficient that estimates the product of A and B by the value of A, and get the long run equilibrium value of the mortgage rate in the US at around 3%, which is quite reasonable given the fact that this rate is nominal and the uh, long term inflation target in the US is, as in many developed countries, 2%. That would lead the long run real rate on mortgages to be equal around 1%, which is definitely a reasonable and economically meaningful result. However, what Vasicek model is also useful for is not only to extract the characteristics of the dynamic equilibrium, which we've just done, but to also forecast our uh, interest rates and their volatility uh, at any point of time in the future, including at an infinite horizon in the long run. To do that, we need to see what the interest rate is now, and we can refer to the very last observation, 3.63%. and uh, consider some time horizon in weeks that we are interested in. So let's start with a time horizon of 52 weeks that corresponds to one year. So to form a forecast, we need to consider uh, what is the rate now and how fast would it converge back to the equilibrium value over the course of 52 weeks on average. And to do that, we can use this particular expression here that utilizes the exponential function that would be uh, basically exponential smoothing of this deviation from equilibrium over the course of 52 weeks, given the uh, convergence speed that quite naturally goes towards the exponent over here. So we need to multiply the interest rate now by the exponent of negative convergence speed times the time horizon that we want to forecast for in weeks. Then we need to add our equilibrium value and multiply it by one minus the exponent of negative convergence speed times time. And closing the appropriate number of parentheses, we can enforce this formula and get that the interest rate one year from now is expected to be 3.37%. And in terms of the mathematical intuition behind this formula, we can see that the further uh, in the future we are, the more relevant, the more dominating the long-run equilibrium is and the less relevant the current interest rate 
uh, is for our forecast, which means that in the long run, when t equals infinity, when we limit uh, our t to infinity, our uh, interest rate forecast becomes just the long run equilibrium B, which is indeed economically meaningful. So the long run forecast would be that the interest rate should gravitate towards 3.05%. Also, we can use the Vasicek model to uh, calculate a closed form solution for the variance of the interest rate over the course of the period. To do that, we have to use this particular formula here. Uh, and to do that, we need to look up the value of the sigma, the standard error of the regression over here. And we need to square the sigma to get the variance, divided by two times a, and multiply by the parentheses that also contain the exponential term in terms of the convergence. Exponent of minus two times the convergence speed times t, which is uh, the time period that we care about. And that gives us the interest rate variance of 0 0.13. But to explain it more naturally in terms of volatility, we can just take the square root of that and get 0 0.36. Basically, it means that over the course of the year, the average interest rate would be 3.37%, but on average it would deviate from this forecast by around 36 basis points. And now, for the long-run volatility, we can again use the logic of limits, and as this term, the exponential term that uh, represents decay, goes to zero, this expression goes to one, and that means that our long-run variance is sigma squared over 2a or that our long-run volatility is sigma divided by the square root of 2 times a. And that gives us long-run volatility of roughly 43.5 basis points, which is also uh, quite understandable and quite uh, um, reasonable forecast to make. In terms of the impact of parameters we have estimated onto the volatility and uh, mean or forecast of the interest rate, we can see that the more volatile the equilibrium is itself, the uh, more stochastic um, factors impact the interest rate in the short run, the more volatile the interest rate would be in the long run, obviously, but also the slower it converges to the long run value, so the smaller the convergence parameter, the adjustment parameter A is, the larger the variance would be. And that is also quite uh, understandable, as if the uh, convergence speed is very low, the interest rate can deviate for quite a long time and quite unpredictably from the equilibrium level of 3.05. And if convergence speed is very fast, so the um, turbulence that we model using the sigma parameter is being decayed quite rapidly, then the long-run volatility, or indeed the volatility over the course of a particular period, would be smaller. And that is how to use the Vasicek model to uh, study the dynamics of interest rates, as well as to forecast interest rate dynamics in terms of mean and volatility. And obviously, if you have got a fixed rate bond that has uh, exposure to interest rates, you could use the Vasicek model output to quantify its risk in terms of volatility and in terms of its investable properties. And that's all there is for the implementation of the Vasicek model in Excel. Obviously, you could also estimate the parameters using maximum likelihood, but given the fact that the Euler's form we have derived today is very tractable and allows us to estimate standard errors very naturally in the Euler's sense, uh, this approach is more commonly used. However, if you would like me to repeat the Vasicek model estimation using maximum likelihood and perhaps compare it with the Euler's results, drop a comment and I'll definitely consider this. Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I make it to see any further suggestions for videos in business, finance, or economics you would like me to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel or consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you very much, and stay tuned.